Welcome again to another edition of Moments with Mike as we continue our study in the book of Ecclesiastes in chapter 1. If you will, allow me to read verses 12 through 18 before I bring some points out for you to ponder as we continue our time together. I, the preacher, have been king over Israel in Jerusalem, and I applied my heart to seek and to search out wisdom for all that is done under heaven. It is an unhappy business that God has given to the children of man to be busy with. I have seen everything that is done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and a striving after wind. What is crooked cannot be made straight, and what is lacking cannot be counted. I said in my heart, I have acquired great wisdom, surpassing all who were over Jerusalem before me. And my heart has great experience of wisdom and knowledge. And I applied my heart to know wisdom and to know madness and folly. I perceived that this is also but a striving after wind. For in much wisdom, verse 18, is much vexation. And he who increases knowledge increases sorrow. As I said in one of the earlier editions of Moments with Mike, in chapter 1, verses 4 through 7, and then 8 through 11, Solomon views life from a scientific perspective and then as a historian. But in this particular passage of Scripture, he views life as a philosopher of seeking truth. I was curious to remember the, the, the exact quote by C.S. Lewis who said, there must be good philosophy because there is so much bad philosophy to contend against. In this case, I'm drawn to the last verse in this particular text. For in much wisdom there is much vexation, and he who increases knowledge increases sorrow. When we go about trying to search out a matter, to understand it from all sides, proud human wisdom alone will always dethrone God and deify man. And that, according to verse 18, will multiply pain and increase grief. But when we as we see over and over again in the book of Proverbs, also written by Psalm. But when we look for knowledge and we look for wisdom and we look for understanding, because we believe that is what God has for us in the pages of his word, and that we are to understand truth as having come from God. When those things happen, I'm going to suggest to you today that Solomon's perspective will be better understood from this chapter in the book of Ecclesiastes. Let me give you four thoughts from this end section. Number one, life is tough, but it is the gift of God. I see that in verse 13. It is an unhappy business that God has given to the children of man to be busy with. Even creation, according to the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 8, groans under the weight of sin. And yes, life can be very difficult. A very close friend of mine who I served with for many years used to say that life is painful, messy, and difficult. But it's also good. Life is tough, but it is the gift of God that's been given to us. And as we search out God in the midst of all that's going on around us and that which is, if you will, formulating within us, truly, God will bring clarity and God will bring peace in those times. Number two, life doesn't get any easier when we duck and run. Life doesn't get any easier when we duck and run. Look at verse 14 of today's text. I have seen everything that is done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and a striving after the wind. Failing to face up to that which is going on around us will not only lead to futility, but I will tell you that most psychologists agree that one of the ways in which people deal with fear in their life is by simply avoiding it. And I would suggest to you that there are healthy fears that we need to grapple with, and there are unhealthy fears that we need to cast aside and once again put ourselves into the hands of a gracious God that loves us. When we avoid unpleasant conversations, when we avoid unpleasant situations, when we 
avoid unpleasant people. That does not guarantee us a peace. All it does is gain us a distance. Third, life holds some things that will not change. Life holds some things that will not change. Verse 15, what is crooked cannot be made straight, and what is lacking cannot be counted. The world is full of paradoxes. But let me remind you of some of the paradoxes that Jesus gave. Jesus said, if you want to be great in the kingdom of God, learn to be the servant of all. Jesus said, if you want to find your life, you have to lose your life. Matthew chapter 5, the Beatitudes, verses 3 through 12, are statements that are paradoxical on the surface. Blessed are they that mourn, when most of the time in our culture, people want to avoid grief. But Jesus goes on to say, but they will be comforted. And then finally, life, if you will, being tough, but the gift of God, it doesn't get easier when we duck and run, we try to avoid, that life holds some things that will not change. But here's the fourth perspective that Psalm brings to us from this last section of Ecclesiastes 1. Wisdom and experience won't solve everything. Wisdom and experience won't solve everything. One of my favorite passages in the Old Testament is Deuteronomy 29 and verse 29 that says the secret things belong to God. While Jesus was on the earth, even he did not know when he'd be returning to take his church to be with him. There are some things as much as you search out, as much as you want to know, there are some things that God has purposefully, and I'm sure for very good reason, has kept. Here's how I believe we should handle that. When we struggle with what we don't know, it might be wise for us to fall back onto that which we do know. When we don't trace the hand of God moving in our life, perhaps that's because we learn to fully deepen our trust in his heart. That which he has made plain to us, that which he has told us about over and over in scripture. I've long since come to the place that I know I'm not going to understand all things. But I've also come to an acceptance of the fact that what I do understand about God is that he's good all the time. And his plans for us are for a purpose and a future and to bring us to a place of hope. God bless you. And I'll look forward to seeing you soon as we begin Ecclesiastes chapter 2 in Moments with Mike. Music